We had Luke's return. Lay your hands on me. We had a lot of one word. I need clarity right now. I have clarity. Complete clarity. And we had John Paul Jones. Those are good. Wow, not bad. This is your Bachelorette recap. Grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren Zima, and we are back. Yes, we are back, as in many of our favorite men are back on the Men Tell All. And I am back to Rosé today, because we'd had a couple weeks of Chardonnay, which I don't hate at all. But oh, it just felt right to come back home, didn't it? Back to the studio, back to the roses, back to the men. And JC, my man, bought me a couple Glacier ice cubes, because I know some of you said, hey, we actually miss the ice in your wine. Well, thank you. Thank you for the support. I like ice in my wine, too. And a Glacier ice cube, wow, it's just the perfect combination because it gives you the ice, but it doesn't melt too quickly. And how about JC, who freaking brings me ice to work? Did we have good men here at the Men Tell All? Let's discuss it. Also, I want to give a shout out to one more good, good man. You may notice that we have some beautiful, real roses here on the Roses and Rosé set today. These are the most gorgeous flowers I have ever received in my life, and they were sent to me by one Chris Harrison. Thank you, Chris Harrison. It was for the anniversary of our first conversation. I know. I know. Tonight. We're picking up where we left off. Okay, let's get into it. We are actually not starting with the men tell all. As Chris says, things are gonna be a little different this season. We are starting back in Greece. We're gonna see that return from another man, question mark? Our boy, our boy Luke. Our boy Luke, he's not our boy, whatever, he's a boy. Okay, so we have Hannah. And I will say, this dress is not my fave. Nor is this hair, but Hannah's my fave. And guys, after this episode, we are going to have to ban a few words from the English language, and I will call them out as we go on. Uh, we can't hear them again, we can't say them again. And I wanna be crystal clear on this. That's the power of the Bachelorette. We have to strike words from the English language. We've used them too much. The question is, did we misunderstand them? I don't want to be misunderstood. Here we go, okay. So it turns out that Jed and Peter and Tyler uh, still think Luke is coming. Now we have to wait for the great Luke. But Hannah's like, f that guy. Like, f that guy. And by the way, drink every time Hannah drops an F-bomb this episode. Like, f that guy. Leave. Uh, f hate that guy. <laughs> Hannah says of Luke, we never have to see him again. But then he's vlogging, drink for a vlog. Luke is vlogging, everybody, okay. Mm -hmm. She doesn't realize that I still love her. Who doesn't deserve to vlog? Doesn't deserve it. Turn that camera around, Luke. So Luke is saying things that are very on brand for Luke. He says that the problem is that Hannah thinks There's no way I'd want to be with her anymore. That he doesn't want to be with her. She's sadly mistaken. Let me be absolutely transparent. She broke up with you, okay? Is that okay? He doesn't get it, Jesus. I don't wanna take the Lord's name in vain. And I don't want Luke to have driven me to that. But that's where I am. Ironically, Luke, you've done what is probably the opposite of your mission. Frustrated people with your beliefs. Okay. I'm not through. This isn't over for me yet. Drink every time Luke has no respect for Hannah's thoughts or opinions. He says, quote, she's never told me she loves me. But I know she loves me. But I know she loves me. I believe she's making a big mistake. Honestly, forget the religion thing. Put aside that religion is a part of this Luke-Hannah conundrum and that faith has become entangled with our frustrations with Luke. The actual problem here is that Luke doesn't think Hannah can think for herself. That's it. Forget your church, forget your Bible, put it all aside, everybody. Respect other people's thoughts, opinions, and decisions. This is gonna be tough, so we might need to take some nice breaks for positivity. Let's take a break for positivity and drink for every beautiful flower. Oh, 
hope Hannah gets a mighty good man at the end of this. Actually, I'm fine with her being just a mighty good woman on her own. How do you guys think it's all gonna end? We only got two more episodes. I'm sad, I don't want it to be over. Here comes our favorite. So, Luke comes back to the rose ceremony, and Hannah says, no, I don't want to talk to you, and no, the f you're not gonna stay. Hannah, I'm gonna stand here all day until you... No, you're not. Take Please it, get Hannah, away from get me. Out. Drink every time Luke does not understand that it's not about him. This is my heart we're talking about here. This is a relationship. It's, this is not about your heart. Your my heart isn't broken yet, because I'm still standing here, and this isn't, this isn't over for me yet. Oh my god, well, all right. And oh my God, Hannah moved the pedestal. She moved the pedestal with the roses. Are the roses at risk? Did you or did you not talk to Colton after you got sent home? <laughs> oh my God, Luke brings up Colton. Leave Colton out of this, even though he is the one who invented Bachelor Nation vlogging. Luke, dude, yeah. just let her. You guys. And then, oh my God, we get the moment we've seen the teaser. Tyler saying, or what? No. You guys give me a minute. No. You, we've you given you plenty yeah. of minutes, listen, dude. Listen, lay your hands or off what? me. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I love hearing Tyler say this so much, and I'm not supporting the threat of physical violence, but can we just put it on a loop? Lay your hands or off me. Or what? Or what? Or what? Oh, Tyler, Tyler in a gray suit. Yeah. Why are you telling her who she is, bro? And the or what is great, but what's even better is that Tyler asks Hannah what she chose to do. Did you already send him home, then? Yeah. All right, then let's go. Uh-huh. Cheers to Tyler, and oh my God, Tyler is biting his lip. Wow. Mm. And drink for every time someone just randomly walks into the scene. Then we have this guy going through the background, unclear who he is. You've had more chances than anyone here, dude. And then Chris Harrison. And then, what a man, what a mighty good man. Chris Harrison asks Hannah what she wants to choose. What do you want? This is all up to you. Tyler and Chris both asking Hannah for her decision instead of telling her what it is. Something Luke has seemingly never done. Can you seriously look me in the eyes and tell me that you have complete clarity and that you have no feelings for me any longer? I can. Okay, that's all I need to hear. Okay, finally, Luke leaves. I hate that guy. Bye! <laughs> and the music changes and the guys oh are happy. God. And Jed takes credit for Hannah's realization about Luke, saying she finally listened to him. She hears me. <laughs> that just means she hears me. And Peter says he's proud of Hannah and calls her a badass. It's so badass, though. It's... Thank you, Peter. It's going to be an amazing night. Okay, now we're back home. It's the men tell all. Even though we've already been hearing a lot of one man telling his thing. We start tonight with Luke. We're starting with Luke. We have to, we have to. We start with him and we have some scattered applause. Here's the thing. I keep saying this. I get that going on a reality show, being exposed to the world for the first time in a brand new environment is probably tough. And a person could come across how they might not have intended. So this moment was Luke's chance to own everything, to apologize straight up, and to save some face with some grace. Do you guys think he did that? It's gonna be a no for me, dog. I just want everyone to be clear that my actions are because I got completely blindsided. So Luke stands by leaving the show over Hannah's sex life. He ignores her point about choosing to look past many of his sins and give him chance after chance. Then Luke says to Chris Harrison, quote, I'm trying to think of how to put this so it's clear to you. I'm trying to think of how to put this so it's clear to you. Yeah. Trust me, babe, he's good. So guys, this is when we know we've got to retire the words. The first word we are retiring, clarity. I need clarity right now. I have clarity. And all of its derivatives. 
praying for clarity. Let me just clarify so everyone can understand. Can you seriously look me in the eyes and tell me that you have complete clarity? The next word we are retiring, closure. We've got to close the door on closure. 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 Or closure. Closure. I'm not leaving until I at least have closure. All right, don't drink during all of Luke's bizarre pauses. What were you hoping for? And trust me, guys, I was at the taping, and in person, it was even more torturous. Mm. Why do you think Luke was pausing? My guess is that he was at home, you know, the show's airing, and that he's being advised by people, you should really think before you speak, Luke. And so he's trying to do that, maybe even trying to call upon something he's memorized in his head, so you know that he can really be understood. I don't want to be misunderstood. 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 Luke keeps saying that it was so frustrating for him to be so misunderstood. Luke, could you own things for a moment and acknowledge that maybe you weren't communicating clearly? Maybe that was on you. Like, do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? <laughs> no, you didn't. And that's on me. Okay. Mm. I think it's time for more wine. Luke's been on the stage for quite a minute, and I think it's time for some more wine. Okay. Oh. How relationships work is through communication. Remember when Luke told Hannah that relationships were about communication? Well, you... And listen, I'm... We just started dating. I still love her. I still want what's best for her. Sure, sure you do. You know what is really evidence of that is the Twitter war you started with her. Did you guys see Luke's tweets? Shameless plug, head to etonline.com for the full breakdown during last week's Fantasy Suites episode. Luke made a Twitter account just to start a public war of words with Hannah, then told her that if she wanted to talk, she knew how to get a hold of him. Do you feel like you made any mistakes? <laughs> Chris asks Luke if he made any mistakes, and Luke says that he wouldn't change a thing. If I could go back, I wouldn't change a thing. So we might as well just stop right here. But the problem with a guy like Luke is that he has frustrated so many people that everybody wants a chance to have their final say with him, and we do still need Hannah to come out. And you know what? While Luke didn't deserve to speak any more words to Hannah and she didn't owe him anything, Hannah is owed one more conversation if she wants it. Where, let me ask this again. Let me, just, let me just say this. Where I'm coming from, yeah, and then completely on brand for Luke, backtracking Parker, he then says he would change a lot of what he did. Obviously, if I could go back, I would change a whole lot. Pause over. Okay. I was on a, a rescue mission for Hannah. Luke says he came to rescue Hannah. Okay, let me let me let me back up. But then clarifies, not like save her soul. Um, I just meant from from them. Rescue her from the other guys? That's not any better. It's so insulting. He allegedly came on the show to rescue her from guys who he didn't even know. Uh, Luke, I mean, I, every comment is just a backtrack. I didn't like that Luke P guy, and I don't blame him for that. He says he doesn't blame the guys for not liking him, but then says the problem with his, but then says the problem, I'm getting, my tongue is getting tied over Luke's but then says the problem was that they wouldn't accept anything he did. You know, on camera, off camera, being neglected, being disrespected. And then Devin comes out and Chris reminds us who Devin is. This is Devin, everybody. But Devin does make some good points. There's a, there are men that want an independent, strong woman, and there are men that want a woman that they can control. Another long pause. Luke, it shouldn't take you this long to think about your answer to the question of whether you want a woman who you would put in a glass case. It's the type of woman you want is someone you can kind of put on the shelf in a glass case and pull down when you need.
Just give me a second, Chris. Okay. The answer should be no. Women are more than simply trophies. <sighs> Just bring me back to positivity. Bring me back to positivity. Okay, I like my shirt, that's positive. Silver linings. Playbook with the good man, Bradley Cooper. Shallow, oh, Luke is shallow. That's the sequel. Okay, I'm getting off on a tangent, Jesus Christ. Ah! Ah! I do want an independent woman. Ultimately, Luke says he wants an independent woman who makes decisions for herself, then says men are supposed to lead women. Although a man is supposed to lead and guide a woman in the relationship. Do you guys think Luke wants an independent woman? Let me know in the comments below. Use your own thoughts and opinions and personal decision-making skills to leave a comment independently here without anyone guiding or leading or making the decision for you. All the men are back now and they're ready to tell all, so. All right, the guys are here. We don't remember all of them. We're missing some of them. Where's Kevin? Remember him? Yeah. John Paul Jones. We got John Paul Jones, and we got Connor, we got Garrett, and we got Dylan back from the dead, and we have Mike. We like Mike. Okay, Chris asks Luke why he couldn't make things work with the guys, and he says he had Hannah in the bag. I had it in the bag. And again, but I can't, we, you know what, I can't even say that. Like, I said this too many times. Now, I know why Hannah was driving so many F-bombs, because Luke had driven her to that point, and that's where I am right now. How are you guys? Are you okay? Okay. I feel like we gave him a clear slate just like we each gave each other a clear slate. He just went completely out of his lane, shall I say. Mike is here to call out Luke, and I miss this. Mike is so good at slayage. He is soft-spoken, but he is smart, and he is savage. And he's saying these things about Luke just straightforward, straight up, and then he says that Luke's future wife will be a prisoner. I think that your future wife is gonna be a prisoner of you. Oh my God. <laughs> Wanna give you the only compliment of the night that you're gonna get and just say that I do respect you being here. And, and then Connor comes in and Connor's being like his real surfer bro self and then Connor is savage and he says to Luke, Just you man. <laughs> I completely do not accept your apologies that you just gave because 15 minutes ago when we were backstage, Chris asked you a very respectful question. Would you change anything? You said no. The guys don't accept Luke's apology. Would you? I think in this case, actions speak louder than words, and Luke's action is to backtrack on his words. So it's quite impossible to accept this apology. It's 2019, man. And then Dylan is back from the dead. <laughs> Hi, Dylan. Just say some very smart things. You can't talk to a woman like that. Simple as that. Is there hypocrisy there? And then Luke just told Chris Harrison to think about what he was asking. Think about what you're asking. And Luke, I stood up out of my chair, just like Tyler stood up for Hannah. But you know what? Just like Tyler, I'm gonna step back because Chris Harrison has got this and he is not phased. But I think to project that faith onto someone else isn't the right way to do it. All right, I forget this guy's name, but he tells Luke not to put his faith on other people, and that was smart. So drink for all the smart guys. Mm -hmm. And then he says he said his piece, and then he keeps speaking. It hurts me to hear that you got, some of you don't accept my apology. And I want you to know that I'm sincer sincerely sorry about how it played out. John Paul Jones. Let's just be positive from here on out. John Paul Jones. He's in the hot 
Todd Seaton, he's looking hot, flipping that hair around. Uh, cheers for him and his great posture in the hot seat. And drink for every time JPJ was so humble and credited his newfound fame to someone else. Wouldn't have been easy to have uh, brought out uh, if you guys weren't so easy to get along with. So, uh, you know, all the attention, you know, that I've gotten is, you know, attributed to you guys. So thank you. And don't drink for every chicken nugget. There were a lot. They were back. There were so many. He threw them into the crowd. God, we love them. Can't wait to watch them on Paradise. And drink for Chris Harrison's adorable laugh during all that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you guys give it up for John Paul Jones. Ooh. Big Mike. Oh, and then Mike's in the hot seat, and cheers to Mike, and dang, Mike looks good. Even Chris Harrison acknowledged that he was a bit of a smoke show. Look at you, man. You're throwing smoke today. Yeah, Mike, dressing well, looking good. Got that smile. Cheers to Mike. Mm -hmm. Then Mike says the reason he's there is to learn how to become a better man. But I continue to grow as a man. I'm glad we're on the positivity train. Mm -hmm. Um, Hannah comes out, and Hannah looks gorgeous, and Hannah thanks the guys. I'm just so blessed to have had you on this ride with me. And she makes a lot of good points. There is this huge fear of what your intentions are. When she became The Bachelorette, the guys didn't know who The Bachelorette would be. And so she wondered if they were there for fame or their careers. Jen? That night, Luke made me believe that he was there for me. But notes that perhaps that's why she had such a strong connection with Luke, because Luke did indicate that he was very clearly there for Hannah. Helpful context, Hannah. Honestly, did I sit around being like, huh, who am I gonna have sex with in the fantasy suites? So Hannah's confronting Luke and talking about how, you know, Luke asked her about her sex life on camera. And it wasn't your business to ever ask me. And I just thought about this, you guys. It is just so invasive to me. It really hasn't been done on the show before that Luke asked Hannah who she'd slept with on camera on the night of the fantasy suite he had with her. He could have asked her that in private off camera later. And now I'm even more clearly annoyed. Okay. Luke leaves. Chris says to catch a flight. Catching a flight. Truly, that's why he left. He Instagrammed about being at a wedding the next day. And also, that's why we weren't able to interview him at the Mentel All, because he had to leave to catch a flight. I really hope to interview Luke at some point. I really do. You guys have been asking a lot of freaking questions. I really wanted to ask him a lot of questions that night. I really, really did. Okay. What questions do you have for Luke? Let me know in the comments below. Then, unlike Luke, Hannah gives an apology that is straight up, that is her owning the things she did that involves no backtracking. She apologizes to America. I just want to say, <sighs> Bachelor Nation, I'm sorry. Him just being on our television screens for so long. For keeping Luke on our television screens so long. Powerful. Oh my god, you guys, time for our first ever Roses and Rosé style vlog. Guess what JC has been inspired by this season? Tyler C. And look how snazzy he's dressing. <gasps> JC Tyler C. Yes, in those tight pants, in a fabulous, colorful jacket moment. Oh my god. Style icon. <laughs> And we have the trailer for the finale. And Hannah is in tears. <laughs> and Hannah is falling. Oh my God, Hannah, we are here to pick you up. But wait, you don't need us. I'm sure you can pick yourself up, girl. Hannah, we adore you. I cannot wait for this two night live finale. The Bachelorette, have you guys ever anticipated a live finale so much? We have to get answers still about Jed, about Peter. What will happen to Tyler or what? Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys, I had to vlog about Bachelor in Paradise. What a promo, what a trailer. Demi and a lady, yes, a first for the franchise. I love it, I love her. And then Derek Pathé is crying, and oh my God, some kind of physical altercation. And oh, John Paul Jones fighting with Derek Pathé, and more crying than ever before. And John Paul Jones crying. Is this gonna be the best season of Paradise ever? I love you guys so much. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Please leave your thoughts and comments. Again, your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I am on Cameo. If you want to book me for a Cameo, I adore you. Bye! Oh, JC, I just realized you gave me two ice cubes. You got a first one, and then you did it a second time.